See this setup behind me? I think it's time we change it up. If you've watched my videos in the past few years, you'd be quite familiar with my desktop PC. It's rocking an Intel 8700K and an Nvidia 1080 Ti. But I think I could simplify it and make the setup better suited to what I do. Yes, it's time to create another desk setup. The one behind me has remained unchanged for the better part of two years. And I've actually owned the physical desk for close to seven. And I'll be keeping it. It's quite interesting to look back and see how much things have changed. I looked a lot different with long hair. I even used to have a 55 inch TV on this very desk. Although functionally, I'm still using the same screens and computer I was back then. The catalyst for me making this video is the fact that the brand BenQ offered to send over a 27 inch 144Hz IPS monitor. And that's definitely a step up from the current ones I'm using. And I'm also going to be replacing my desktop with a laptop because I can actually bring it anywhere I want. I can edit outside, I can edit somewhere else. I'm not tied to the desk behind me. So anyway, let's clear it out. When I said this was dusty, I wasn't kidding around. I vacuum this desk every week or so and it always ends up like this. To back up my files, I have a pair of mirrored six terabyte external hard disks as well as another drive that I keep off site. Those six terabyte hard disks are now full, so I'm going to need some more. Behind the desk is an absolute mess of cables and power supplies. Thankfully, nothing has caught fire yet. A lot of spiderwebs have also started to show up recently, which is a little bit concerning considering I sleep right next to this desk. Here comes the fun part, clearing it all out and starting again. I'm yet to decide what I'll do with my desktop PC now that I no longer need it. I should probably keep it as a spare just in case the Dell laptop dies. I could never really reach the vacuum nozzle under my PC, and as we can see, it's got a spicy layer of dust. I love fishing, and fishing for cables behind a desk is just as fun. Looks like we've caught a really dusty one. Power supplies seem to attract the most amount of it. That sure is quite a mess of cables. I wiped all of those cables off, as a lot of them were as dusty as the desk itself. Using a vacuum got the surface looking a whole lot cleaner, we are nowhere near done yet though. There are simply so many areas that need attention. I'll be wiping down these surfaces before it all goes back together. I pretty much cleared out the whole room and vacuumed everything, which took a lot longer than I was expecting. The carpet in here is really old. It's the original one from when the house was built back in the 1960s. That's the main reason why this room gets so dusty. To get easy access to the back of the desk, I moved it forwards. I forgot how heavy the thing was. Behind the desk is a strip of LED lights. They're cheap ones from Bunnings, and sadly some of them are now flickering or straight up not working anymore. Since they're just adhered to the desk with tape, it wasn't hard to remove them. It's still a usable strip of lights, perhaps I'll repurpose them out in the shed or something. Replacing those will be another cheap strip of LED lights from Bunnings. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping I have more luck with this one. I've got a few power boards glued to the back of the desk, and I'm going to add another one. When I say glued, I mean adhered with double-sided tape with a dab of super glue. I learned the hard way that double-sided tape isn't strong enough to hold a vertically mounted power board. With the back of the desk cleaned and wiped down, I added the glue to the double-sided tape and held the board in place for about a minute. To remove any leftover debris and surface gunk, I wiped down the desk with some eucalyptus oil. This gave the room a pleasant smell of eucalyptus. This desk is without a doubt showing its age. Uh, the wood grain isn't real and in some areas it's worn through, exposing the light colored MDF that's underneath. I went over the big areas with a permanent marker. I then went ahead and installed a new LED strip. I had planned on putting the laptop on a cooling pad, so I bought one on eBay. Wow, it's really light and quite flimsy. The singular fan in the center doesn't look like it would push much air. Even with some pressure applied, it rocks, and not in the good way, even on a flat surface. The ergo stand is a no-go stand. The cheap laptop cooler I bought off of eBay was of terrible quality, and honestly, that's probably got a lot to do with the fact that it was really cheap. However, I did spend an extra $10 and bought a much better one from Officeworks. You really do get what you pay for. A lesson learned, don't cheap out on your cooling pad. 
At the time of making this video, these were the best value per gigabyte external drives I could buy. I'll be backing up the same files to each one of these drives, and I'll also keep another drive off site for redundancy. I know Seagate gets a bad rap, but I won't be constantly writing to these drives, and that should help with their longevity. They're basic, but good value. I also found this Kensington laptop lock at Officeworks. It was marked down from $79 to only $9. At some point in the future, I'll install it on something. I just couldn't resist a bargain. The speakers I plan on using is this pair of Creative T40s. They're pretty decent desktop speakers. I wouldn't mix audio with them, but for general listening, they sound great. They've also got a detachable speaker grill. And here's the centerpiece of the whole setup, the BenQ EX2780Q. I've not been paid money by BenQ, however I do get to keep the display. I'll be giving you my honest opinions and thoughts. This 27 inch IPS display has a resolution of 1440p, a refresh rate of 144Hz and an advertised brightness of 350 nits. Inside the box we've got all the cables, documentation, stand, and even a remote. This is something you very rarely see with a computer monitor, very nice indeed. The bronze coloured speaker grill and stand are a nice aesthetic choice. For such a gaming focused monitor, I'm very glad it doesn't have a typical gaming look to it. Now it's time to unveil the setup. It's simple, clean, and most importantly, works well for the work that I do. The heart of this setup is a Dell G715 with an i7-9750H, 16GB of RAM, and an NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max-Q. I use a Keytron wireless mechanical keyboard, and honestly, it seems like every tech YouTuber uses one of these. Before I set up my stereo pair of creative speakers, I thought I would give the BenQ's built-in Travolo speakers a shot. I was actually really surprised with how they sounded and how loud they could get. There was plenty of low end and vocals sounded clear. The remote makes it very easy to change the EQ profiles, and there's also a dedicated volume wheel under the display. No messing around with menus. I do all of my sound mixing using a pair of studio headphones. So for general everyday listening, I'm just going to straight up use the BenQ's built-in speakers instead of my dedicated pair. The remote gives you quick access to the blue light filters as well as the HDRI presets. Speaking of HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range, this monitor has an advertised brightness of 350 nits, which isn't enough for true HDR. However, it is able to dynamically adjust brightness and contrast to essentially emulate HDR. BenQ is calling this HDRI. There are several built-in presets for gaming and cinema. With the testing I've done, it seems to really boost saturation and crush the dark areas of the image. I don't think I'll ever use this feature. To get a reading of how color accurate this monitor is, I used the program DisplayCal and my ColorMonkey screen calibrator. I'd highly recommend calibrating your monitor, especially if you're a content creator. The results are quite good, a brightness of 355.5 nits, and solid coverage of the DCI-P3, sRGB, and Adobe RGB color gamuts. The Delta E values were also low, which is great to see. High refresh rate gaming was also a joy to look at on this display. I just hope you're a better driver than I am. There we've got my new computer setup. I'm actually editing this video on the setup right now. It's a lot simpler, but it works for me. And that's the most important thing of all. Thank you very much for watching. I've got some more videos planned that are more in line with my regular content, i.e. lots of old laptops. In fact, that's basically all I've got planned. Anyway, if any of you are in the Eucalyptus Oil Squad, there'll be a behind the scenes video out in a few days. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing.